The iPad is the missing link between a phone and a laptop. Using the touchscreen, you can browse the internet, use apps, listen to music, watch movies, and play games. The iPad comes preloaded with the basics. The tablet is 0.5 inches thin, weighs 1.5 pounds, and has a 9.7 inch display. The battery life is 10 hours and standby mode lasts up to 30 days. It is built with a custom Apple processor. The iPad will start at $499. The tablets have Wi-Fi. Customers can sign up for AT&T 3G internet. A 250 megabyte per month plan costs $14.99. An unlimited internet costs $29.99. The iPad will be available in March. The iPad is going to change the way information is delivered. It will eliminate the digital divide between content creators and consumers. Apple's iPad and the iTunes Store work together to fill the void between these two groups. Non-tech-savvy consumers, such as your mom, who need a device to perform certain key tasks will now have the ability to consume music, movies, photos, apps, and more with ease. And content creators don't need to worry about how to deliver their media to the consumer, because Apple handles it for them. Apple has a history of creating game-changing pieces of technology. The iPad is one more product that fuels Apple's reputation as a revolutionary company. Taking a look at the past products Apple has created and the way in which these products change the world can help explain why the iPad will successfully change the way in which digital media is delivered. It was 2001 when the iPod was introduced to the world, the era of Napster and the digital music revolution. Steve Jobs started the unveiling by saying, interestingly enough, in this whole new digital music revolution, there is no market leader. No one has found the recipe yet for digital music. And we think not only can we find the recipe, but we think the Apple brand is going to be fantastic because the people trust the Apple brand to get their great digital electronics from. We're introducing a product today that takes us exactly there, and the product is called iPod. And with that, Mr. Jobs pulled the white rectangular device out of the front pocket of his jeans and held it up for the audience, who responded with polite applause and a confused look. The iPod wasn't immediately attractive to consumers. Actually, it was the invention of iTunes that sparked consumers' interest. From 2001 through 2004, iPod's market share hovered around 20 to 30 percent. But in 2005, the year of iTunes, the number jumped to over 70 percent. The innovation with the iPod was not in the product, it was in the innovation of the product's value network. iTunes and the iPod changed the music industry forever. Although the MP3 format has been around close to 20 years, it was just in the last eight years the music industry has watched its global revenue fall from $37 billion in 2000 to $18 billion in 2008. Although more than 5 billion songs have been sold through iTunes, and digital music generated $3.7 billion worldwide in 2008, digital sales only account for 20% of the industry's revenue. With the iPhone, Apple continued to create revolutionary devices by introducing a mobile smartphone that surpassed any existing device on the market. The iPhone, with the iTunes App Store, created a new digital marketplace for software vendors. The iPad will continue on this trend of changing the way information is delivered to consumers. It can be said that the iPad doesn't do anything that existing devices don't already do, that it's not introducing any new technology. This is true. It's not the functionality that will make the product successful, rather it's the iPad's tightly integrated features and a closed system that enables content producers to more efficiently reach consumers. Many people, such as the stereotypical mom, find utilizing technology frustrating. The iPad eliminates the chore of setting up and configuring devices and allows the user to focus on just using it. Apple is eliminating the complexity that so many people find frustrating. Open systems by design are complex, with operating system interfaces that require technical knowledge to set up and configure, and are susceptible to security issues and frequent crashes. The closed system approach that Apple uses prohibits the installation of unnecessary programs that result in slow startups and crashes and the eventual need of reinstallation. Not only is this alleviating stress from moms, but also from those tech-savvy family members who are charged with the role of being the unpaid Geek Squad employee. With the iPod, Apple is creating an ecosystem in which businesses can effectively distribute their products to consumers, the moms of the world. Apple is removing the digital divide those consumers experience when trying to utilize technology. And in iPod and iPhone fashion, there will surely be imitators popping up shortly.